I'm making the worst Mario Wii hack ever made, and I think a good start is picking some good world map music. So the first level we have is 4-1, and what I've done is I've swapped all the water and non-water. I had to move some of the enemies up into the water, take some enemies back down below. Oh, nice flower. You might get deceived into thinking this actually looks cool, but don't worry, I'll, I'll prove you wrong soon enough. For example, um, once you get all the red coins, it soft locks you. It doesn't soft lock you, you can just come down here. There's bad tiling though, there's some naked pipes. I'm not waiting for this guy, he takes too long. There's technically a level, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> now after the checkpoint, I got a bit bored of this concept. There's a star coin where the roulette was, and then if you go over to this X, you get taken back to 1-1. So a few weeks ago, I asked my community what I should make 4-1, and the most liked reply, I'd do. And the most liked reply was something I already did, like one level prior, so I did the second most liked reply, which was to make 1-1, but in reverse. Hey buddy, when you collect a chest to automatically end the level, like collecting a flagpole, so... I felt like that was a bit neater. Now you may have noticed at the start of the level it said infinite lives at Peach's Castle. And that's not a lie, if you go to Peach's Castle, there's plenty of lives for you to pick from. Which means there's not really much point in going to 1-Up Houses. But if for some reason you think the Nintendo 1-Up Houses are better than my 1-Up House, then let's see if you can do it blind, since you're so passionate about it. Now in 4-2, I got a bit annoyed with all the jumping cheap cheap, so I placed every single one of them with the jumping porcupuffer. I think these guys are much more interesting, much more fun to deal with. I've never heard of like a porcupuffer level that people dislike, so, you know, it just makes sense to replace all of them. And some could call this enemy spam. What, 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 you thought I was gonna retort it? No. Now I didn't remove the star on the level, and you may wonder why because surely the star makes it easy. But remember, the point of this isn't to be hard, it's to be annoying. And I think most people would actually be disappointed to see that I left the star in. Or maybe they think it was a mistake, or that they outsmarted me. But really, that's just how bad this hack is. It doesn't even consider removing the star. Oh, I've got to get through here without dying. Easy though, because I'm so good. Now for the Porky Puffer ambushes, there's three, as usual. Here's the first one. It's not too difficult, but it is a bit scary. There's a bunch of Porky Puffers and you have to go down into the water without them hitting you. It's arguably a good idea. So the second one, probably the funniest one. Some of you may remember this dark level from World 6 where you go on the raft and it moves along the water and when the water rises, the raft rises. But that's not actually how the level works. How the level works is the raft moves on its own and the water moves to match it. So if I was to say, change the path of the raft to be very, very fast. <laughs> so yeah, the water just follows suit. And what's interesting is when you hit the surface of the water, it pulls you up and down a little bit, which means that actually getting to these top balloons, it's basically just luck. You mash the button, sometimes it lets you up, and sometimes it doesn't, and you know, that's just the way it is. And also, because the raft moves so quickly up and down, the chest sometimes just clips into the floor. So to counteract that, you just have to clip into the floor with it. Finally, we have this one. It may look similar to the first one, except that no threat, um, but the key comes to, uh, when you go down here, and the screen is curled. It's not difficult, but it's also not fun, and you know, that's the... That's something to live by. Okay, we can go back up. I'm just having the time of my life, what can I say? Now, 4-3 has always been a bit of a confusing level for me. I don't know about you, but I just kind of find it challenging to figure out where to go. So to stop other people having the same issue as me, what I've done is I've labeled everything in the level. So here we have the ground, the trees. This is where the crabs would be, but you know, I, I got rid of them so I could just have text saying crab. Got the platforms, got the big urchins. We got some log platforms here that we can jump on. Here we have some smaller pipes. You can tell they're smaller because I marked them in lowercase. Here's where all the red coins are. So next time you need to play the real 4-3, you'll know where all the red coins are. And uh, make sure you don't jump onto the urchins, because, you know, urchins aren't platforms. So, you know, if you jump on urchins, obviously that's not going to help you out. And then I also realized people have been struggling with 1-1 one, one a bit. So what if we just include that again? But I label everything. So again, people understand how to beat it. That's just something that for some reason people are really struggling with this level, even though they've played it so many times. I don't really understand what the challenge is. There's a bunch of semi-solids here, but spelled incorrectly. Uh, here are all eight of the red coins that spawn. Every single time you play it, all eight will spawn. Again, I don't want people to get stuck on the hack. I want them to play as many of these garbage levels as possible. Now, while I'm still mini, I did make this cool cannon level. You need a mini mushroom to enter. I don't give you one. And then we go down into the cannon. Cool cannon. Anyway, back to 1-1. One, one. And you should have no problem. You shouldn't die to the King Bill. You know where it spawns. I showed you in 4-3. Because, of course, grab the eight red coins. 
And there we are, another easy level in the book. Now, even though this is a cannon level, just going in the warp cannon counts as clearing the level. So if you clear it with a flagpole, that also counts as using the cannon. But now, welcome to the emoji quiz. You'll be presented with a selection of emoji, and it's your job to figure out which of the vanilla New Super Mario Bros. Wii levels they are meant to represent. Now, this quiz was tested on 600 participants to see which questions are the hardest. Participants had to pick the exact level, but you'll be given multiple choice questions. If anything seems confusing, it's because this quiz was generated using ChatGPT. So if you want to try any of these, uh, just pause the video when each one comes up. This is the first question. You can see how many people got it correct, and this is when they were given a choice of all the levels in the game. So we have a castle, and we're just not sure where you have to go. That's what the compass means. And that's meant to represent 2 dash castle because there's a path multiple choice. Next up we have a raft and when enemies fall on the raft it stops. That represents 5-4. Here we have a level with ice cubes and the red blocks that appear in the level. This level has crabs in it. You should know this one, I, I clearly labeled them all. This is a level that takes place in the sky but because of fog sometimes it's hard to see. Here we go, we got a checkpoint halfway through. This quiz is easy, no one's gonna struggle with this. It's a sky level that has bombs and bullets. It has waves that are made of fire. This level contains cactuses, palm trees, and Yoshis. This is a mountain level in which there's an enemy that just keeps swimming along. This is a level that contains penguins and it's a vertical. And there we go. That's the easy quiz. I, I said it's pretty easy. And you can fight Wendy here, or if you want, you can just go to 1-1. One, one. I, I don't really know why you would pick this, but... You know, some people like 1-1. One, one. And since they like 1-1 one, one so much, what I've done is I've removed all of the pits. So, uh, you know, you, you get to play the whole thing. You can finally die here and restart. Anyway, if we want to try the hard level, we're going to have to first go back through World 3 to turn off the switch. Then we go back through World 4, you may have to refight the Porky Puffer. So now we can access the hard route, and when I say these are hard, I mainly mean that they're stupid, because remember, all of these are AI generated. What I did was I explained to the AI what the levels were about, and I told it to represent that level in emojis. And these are the ones that it didn't really understand. So this one had a mushroom in it, and red blocks. This one had a turtle which shoots magic at you. In addition, there's a chain link fences. This is actually either five castle or two tower. You can pick either. This is a grass level in which you get pants that lets you rocket up into the air. This is a desert level that takes place underground. In addition, you can make a bit of money there. Oh my God, there's Coopers and Explosion. Oh my God, this is so retro. Mario Bros remake. Halfway through the hard mode. This starts off as a desert, but after you play it, you go to a forest where forest creatures live. In this one, there's some dangerous platforms with spikes on the side, and they move to the left and right. This is a sky level in which there's bullets and rockets, and it's very scary because they follow you around. In this level, we have a Koopaling, which goes on a yellow ball. In addition, there are these platforms which spin around. In this level, it's underground, and there are some plants which are alive. In addition, there's a whole lot of purple. And there we go. You've beaten the quiz. What a well-designed level on all fronts. Now, finally, we'll do 4-4. Four, four. Uh, but this stage already sucks, so I don't really need to change it. Well, 